says the disparity emerged only when the operating rooms were empty. Then 8% of healthy black women wound up delivering by C-section compared with 4.8% of healthy white women. So this is one of the biggest points I think that people don't realize. Here's this quote. There is lots of evidence that if a hospital has a CT scan or an MRI, they, are, they like to keep it busy. If you have an operating room set up to do C-section, they like to keep that busy too. Why? Because elective procedures make money. Elective procedures roll in the dough. This is why if you come in and you got brown skin, and if that operating room is empty and you're about to have a baby, they want to cut the baby out instead of you delivering the baby au natural. Black women. They are the uh, they are the ones who we try as much as we can to hold dear to us within the black community. And when something bad happens to them or if they are exploited in any way. A lot of us as brothers, husbands, fathers, sons, we get testy. We get, we get, uh, we get it, you know, we have a conniption when we see systems that are doing their best to exploit our mothers, our sisters, our aunts, our daughters. What about the healthcare system? I think it's important that we examine this. A lot of times we talk about infant mortality. We talk about the mortality of black women, uh, especially when giving birth in this country. But a lot of times we don't focus on some of the other issues. Well, one of these issues being C-sections. Now, a C-section or a cesarean section is basically a type of surgery, a routine surgery that is given uh, where instead of the baby being born, going through the birth canal vaginally, the baby is taken out uh, through the abdomen. Uh, really, they actually make an incision and take the baby out through that way. So it's relatively something that's been done for over the last century, uh, especially on a larger scale here in the United States. Uh, but uh, it has been heavily used, especially on black women. Let's go into this article. So, I think I should, yeah, I'll increase it just a little bit more. So it says, doctors give black women unneeded C-sections to fill operating rooms, study suggests. The blurb says, healthy black women with low risk factors were far more likely to get C-sections than white women with similar medical histories, a new study found. Let's get into this. Obstetricians are more likely to give black women unnecessary cesarean sections, putting those women at higher risk for serious complications like ruptured surgical wounds. That's the conclusion of a new report of nearly 1 million births in 68 hospitals in New Jersey, one of the largest studies to tackle the subject. Even if a black mother and a white mother with similar medical histories saw the same doctor at the same hospital, the black mother was about 20% more likely to have her baby via C-section, the study found. I find it interesting on this particular subject because I, I asked my mother, I am one of three. I asked her which one of us between me and my other brothers were C-sections. Two of us 
being myself and one of, one of my brothers, was a C-section birth. Now, with that being said, was it absolutely necessary? Okay. My brother, who was born, he was a big baby. That was probably necessary. But me? Six pounds, eight ounces? Nah, I don't, it probably wasn't necessary for me to be a C-section birth. Why not? You know? But let's continue. says the additional operations on black patients were more likely to happen when hospitals had no scheduled C-sections, meaning their operating rooms were sitting empty. That suggests that racial bias paired with financial incentives played a role in a doctor's decision making, the researchers said. I want to make this abundantly clear. Why are medical decisions being made based on profit? Medical decisions about our lives should not be driven by profit. This is why I said to Mr. Chester Todd earlier, that I personally feel that we should have a nationalized healthcare system because profit should not exist in healthcare at all. Absolutely not. That's out of order. And the fact that black women are being targeted for this profit making scheme is absolutely horrific. It not only can put lives in danger, not saying that it's a life endangering procedure, but it's something that should be a last resort. But the fact that they're doing last resort procedures as the first resort, it doesn't make any sense. So when they can charge that black woman's insurance, or they can charge or send that bill to that black woman and make more money. That's wild. It's wild. Tell me this system isn't white supremacist, but I'll tell me this system is white supremacist. It is predatory. That's, let's continue. Says how that bias creeps in is not entirely clear. Doctors may rush to perform a C-section faster for black women, worried about the well-known racial disparities in childbirth outcomes. Black women may feel less empowered to push back against the suggestion of C-section when their labor is not progressing. Or when they do push back, they may be less likely to have their concerns taken seriously. This is something that has been spoken about Time and time again, when it comes to the medical community, especially when it comes to being black, our voices are heard, are less likely to be heard. Even when it comes to pain, there are still textbooks, even down to this day, that will say that black people somehow have a lower pain, to, I'm sorry, have a higher pain tolerance. Somehow saying that our skin is thicker, when in reality, that's a whole bunch of baloney. That's not true at all. How many black women that have went to uh, gynecologists, OBGYNs, and have expressed to their lament that they have not been listened to? How many women have complained that they think they may have endometriosis only for a doctor to wave it away and go, oh, it's just period pain. You're fine. And then they get seen by a black OB, by a black gyno. And they're like, nah, nah, you, you got endometri endometri uh, sorry, endometriosis. 
or you have some other rare condition that they didn't bother to look into. All they did was they saw the color of your skin and said, and uh, you're, you're okay. This is systemic. This has been happening for decades and decades and decades to those of us. As somebody that frequently goes to the hospital, as somebody that is disabled, that is that has a chronic condition, you have to be your own advocates because guess what? These people will not do it for you. And even when you're own, your own advocates, still, what you say falls on deaf, ear, deaf ears. Let's continue. Physicians may have certain beliefs about black women. That was from Janet Curie, from a uh, health economist from Princeton University. They might not be listening to black women as much or be more afraid that something will go wrong. C-section delivery is the most common surgery in American hospitals. Despite years of advocacy to lessen its use, about 30% of babies in the United States are delivered this way. About double the proportion deemed appropriate by the World Health Organization. While the surgery can be life-saving, unnecessary surgeries create a higher risk of complications for mothers as well as higher medical bills. It says they found that overall, black women were 25% more likely to have C-sections than white women were. Among women who arrived healthy and who had few risk factors, the gap was even larger, with black women more than twice as likely to be given C-sections. Medical records cannot capture everything a doctor used to make medical decisions. The researcher said, Doctors might not always write down details that made black women better candidates for surgical delivery. Still, the data on the capacity of the hospital's operating rooms points to explanations that are not medically justified. When other women were occupying operating rooms with scheduled cesarean deliveries, black and white women had the same likelihood of being there sent for delivery. If black moms are better candidates for C-section, then you should see them getting sent for C-section more even when there's limited capacity. That was from Molly Schnell. It says the disparity emerged only when the operating rooms were empty. Then 8% of healthy black women wound up delivering by C-section compared with 4.8% of healthy white women. So this is one of the biggest points I think that people don't realize. Here's this quote. There is lots of evidence that if a hospital has a CT scan or an MRI, they, are, they like to keep it busy. If you have an operating room set up to do C-section, they like to keep that busy too. Why? Because elective procedures make money. Elective procedures roll in the dough. This is why if you come in and you got brown skin, and if that operating room is empty and you're about to have a baby, they want to cut the baby out instead of you delivering the baby au natural. Because they get to charge more money because they put that scalpel to your abdomen. Because if you just let it come out naturally, right, with the assistance of the hospital, they, can, they don't get to charge that much. This is why we say that healthcare should be a human right and profits should not be associated with healthcare. I guarantee you, if we had a nationalized healthcare system, the rates of C sections between black women and white women would be relatively the same. Because if you have an operating room that's not being used, and if it's not being used for profit at all, that operating room stays open. And that operating room is going to be more available for emergencies 
rather than elective surgeries. And so it's crazy when you have, you know, a, a, a for-profit system like this. Uh, Dr. Ajioma Akwandu, a practicing obstetrician with Kaiser Permanente in Atlanta, who also researched racial disparities in C-section rates, said the study was novel because it followed the money. Now, here's the figures. It says that's really the driver of so much that happens in medicine. Private insurance plans typically pay about $17,000 for C-section delivery and $11,500 for vaginal birth. Let me ask you something. If you don't go to the hospital, let's say you don't go to the hospital and you have a, a birth at home. That baby comes out without you actually that baby's going to come whether or not you're at the hospital or not. Now, there could be complications. There could be things like that that arrive, of course, that the hospital can intervene in. But typically, nature takes its course. $11,000 to do something that naturally happens? Now, I understand some of you may want things like an epidural in order to be able to you know, kind of quell some of the pain, uh, labor pains and things like that. You know, it's good to have medical personnel there to monitor to make sure that the baby is okay. This may have times where the baby may be, you know, born breached, which means they may have to turn the baby around. There may be uh, other issues where the umbilical cord goes around the baby's neck, which happens actually a little bit more often than people realize, things like that, right? Of course, you know, they got to, they got to be careful with things like that, right? This is why that that's important. Uh, and so, but eleven thousand mm. dollars. So I want to continue in this article a little bit further. But one of the things I want to do is I want to share this uh, this video. And because I think it's also really interesting. Let's get into this. Thirty percent of pregnant women in the United States end up having cesarean sections. It's a number that many say is far too high. Local 10 medical specialist Christy Kruger has details on those concerns in today's HealthCast. <laughs> A cesarean delivery, or most of you know it as a C-section, is a life-saving surgery in emergency situations. But if it is overused, it could be harmful to both mom and baby and could bring an increased risk of at least one chronic condition to infants. This brand new study shows that a C-section will increase the risk for infection, for bleeding, and may lead to problems in future pregnancies. The surgery may also be a problem for your baby as well. Those moms who chose to have a primary or first birth cesarean section Section, those babies had a higher incidence, absolute risk of asthma and had hospitalizations because of asthma. So that kind of points to, again, that cesarean section is not necessarily the best route. Also, in today So with that being said, C-sections should be the last resort to preserve the life of the mother and of the baby. The fact that it's being used routinely, especially at higher rates for black women, to be honest with you, should push you to push for a either a single payer healthcare system or more broadly, a national healthcare system that takes the profit motive out of the healthcare system entirely. It is the profit motive that is bad for us. It is the profit motive that is harming or could potentially harm black women and babies. This is why when I talk about a national healthcare system, these are the type of things that I'm talking about. It's interesting actually, I was looking up pictures 
of babies that were harmed for cesarean sections. There was a little baby that was just born that had a gash on his cheek. That gash came from the scalpel. Now, thank God that baby is alive. And if that was during an emergency where they had to do a C-section in order to save the baby, I'd rather my baby have a little cut on his cheek than, and the mother and the baby survive. That's fine. But what if that was an unnecessary cesarean section? See what I mean? So, you know, you open that baby up to having infections and bleeding, things like that. This is why I say should be last resort. But unfortunately, they want to make their money. These hospitals that are privately owned or even some that are the nonprofit, they still want to make their money. This is why it needs to be community owned. We need to have community owned hospitals, clinics, imaging centers, because ultimately they just want to make their money. But if they're owned by the community and there's no profit motive at all, they're going to be looking at out for your health, which also includes preventing you from having to come in too, which means more preventative medicine. So when speaking about the health risks. There is something that I came across that I think that's also a interesting but vital interesting but vital story to go down regarding C sections and the un unnecessary ones. Let's take a look. My first pregnancy was perfect. <laughs> My obstetrician recommended a cesarean. There were no complications at all. I did well, my son did well, and we had a, a really uneventful recovery. And sure enough, about a year later, I got pregnant with my second son, and I ended up developing a severe complication called placenta accreta. So placenta accreta is when the placenta attaches too deeply into the uterine wall. The placenta can become invasive, like a cancer. I had access to some of the most experienced and talented surgeons in the country, and to hear them speak with respect and awe of a placenta accreta delivery, one of them actually even said to me that placenta accreta deliveries are predictably unpredictable. We had gone into my delivery preparing to do a cesarean hysterectomy and expected bladder repair. But once the team was able to get in there and see how severe my case actually was, they determined that it was too risky to proceed. So the decision was made to go ahead and close me up with the entire placenta intact and untouched. And I spent two months postpartum in the hospital. My son spent a month in the NICU and my stay had multiple surgeries, um, the most dramatic of which was where I required 26 units of blood products. My husband was a huge support system for me. He spent every night in the hospital with me and my older son, Everett, moved in with my parents and my whole family really just became all hands on deck to help me get through this. Leo's amazing. He's feisty and strong. He's like a little powerhouse. <laughs> and he's such a gift. I can't imagine my life without him. A cesarean can be a life-saving intervention. The goal is not to eliminate cesareans. The goal is to make decisions regarding cesareans appropriately and to so one of the things that I wanted to address, uh, there was actually a comment that comes in here. I rarely get comments from Twitch, but uh, this person, uh, Liberty Twitcher says, but isn't that the woman's choice? Uh, yes, uh, especially, uh, you know, in regards to their body. Yeah, 
Um, and this person says, are you saying black women shouldn't have the choice? No, but I'm, what I am saying is that uh, it should be advised that it's a last resort. The problem is, is that they're giving it as an option like it's on the menu. And it's like, it's like, yeah, you can, but at the same time, it's like we advise that you don't do it because of the risks and complications that could come from it. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. It's like, it's just like, if you can avoid it, then why not just avoid? It? You know? Uh, that's why I also say that, uh, you know, I, I, I echo with women are saying that it should be a, you know, last resort, but at the same time, if they still want to do it, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't necessarily stop them, but you know, you advise them and say, well, this is going to be something that puts you at risk in certain ways. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. Let's continue. Recognize that even an uncomplicated cesarean and recovery can still put the mother at significant future risk. So coming out of my experience, I just couldn't believe that more people weren't talking about placenta accreta. And it's great to see that the data was getting out there about how high our cesarean rates are and that we need to start decreasing them. But most of the conversations were about decreased recovery times and lower cost. Nobody was saying that there is a significant patient safety impact to our high cesarean rates. And that's where I really felt compelled to start sharing my story and to start educating people on what the downstream risks of a cesarean can be. So one thing she talked about was also things like re decreased recovery time. Um, if you're having a typical uh, vaginal birth, then, you know, your recovery time, uh, you know, is one to two days in a hospital versus recovering from a surgery takes a week or more. So if you're in the hospital for a week, who's raking in more money? See what I mean? Versus, you know, if you have, if, if you're not in danger at all, if the baby is fine and it's a typical birth, if you have just a regular vaginal birth, well, guess what? I mean, you could just be in a hospital two days tops and then you're at home recovering. The thing is like, they want, you know, you in the hospital as long as possible, especially if you got good insurance so that you can stay and they can break in the dough. These people will charge you, you know, twenty five dollars for an aspirin. You don't think they don't want to keep giving you those aspirin? You don't think they want you to, you know, keep that up? Come on now. There are too many cesareans now. One in three births. And researchers estimate that as many as 50% of those are unnecessary. And since a prior cesarean is a significant risk factor for developing a future accreta, that means that there are women developing accreta when it could have been prevented. So the easiest way to decrease the amount of accretas is to reduce cesarean levels. I can't say if I would have done anything differently if I had known about Akrita, but I can say that the decisions that we made surrounding my first birth were not fully informed. Women are dying from this, and mothers are dying from this. We need to take the risks of a cesarean seriously. So this is also another point that a lot of people don't take into consider consideration is the, uh, you know, what if you have a second baby, you know, and there are some people who, you know, don't think about the, you know, once you have a cesarean, you might have to have another cesarean, you might can't, you know, or 
you know, it's going to make complications for uh, future births. You know, if you have, a, especially if you have your cesarean as your first kid, you know, and if it wasn't a last resort, you know what I'm saying? So let's continue into this article. Go back in. It says doctors know <clears throat> the data shows where there, there are worse birth outcomes for black women and that could play into having their lower risk tolerance. But at the same time, they're perpetuating another disparity in C-sections. New study found that rather than preventing harm to C-sections giving birth to women, when the C-sections given to women when the operating rooms were otherwise empty led to more surgical complications. Recovery often requires more time in the hospital and other studies have also link the surgery to lower odds of successful breastfeeding. A C-section, Dr. Okwando said, is taken as something that is common, but it's not without risk. So this was a deep article, you know, to go into when it comes to how those of us who are, you know, uh, black in this country, we are often exploited. If they're not going to exploit us through the healthcare system, they're going to exploit us through the prison industrial complex. Because this is what they do. Why? Because ultimately, if you go into the prison industrial complex, then you honest, then you get uh, slave labor. Remember, the 13th Amendment is still, you know, allows for slavery. So they're going to give you get you either way, either through the the for profit industrial complex or the prison industrial complex. Or they'll try to make money off of you in the military industrial complex by getting your kids to sign up at predominantly black and brown schools to go fight in wars overseas and put their bodies on the line. So this is why. The profit motive has to be taken out of the hands of these corporations, and we need a pro-human motive that only focuses on our health, nothing else. So I think this goes without saying that if you want to keep the profit motive in the healthcare system, you want to keep us at risk. And don't come to me saying, oh, well, you want these people who are working in the hospitals, you want the nurses and the doctors to be slaves. Nobody said that. For anybody who, when I talk about uh, uh, making the healthcare system a national healthcare system, let me ask you this. Are the people who work in the consulates, are they slaves? Are the people who work in the social security offices, are they slaves? Are the people who work at TSA, are they slaves? Now, they should get paid more than what they do, but are they slaves? Are the people who work in the FBI, are they slaves? Are the people who work in the Department of Agriculture, are those slaves? You see, the thing about it is, is that we're talking about nationalizing it so that there's no profit. That's the point. And also, if you nationalize it, that means everybody can use it, no matter if they don't have money or, or if they do. Because there's no profit. Therefore, any human being on this land can actually use it and get help. Now, if you want to talk about the cost of it, yeah, it's going to cost money. But at the same time, this is why we focus on preventative medicine. Preventative medicine would mean that less people have to go to use these medical facilities as often. And if you do that, guess what? That lowers the cost as well. And you also have more healthier people. Don't you want the entire population to be healthier? I would like to see that. So 
if you haven't thought of a nationalized healthcare system, I recommend that you do. Uh, you know, of course, many people are for single parent healthcare, which I say is a step in the right direction, but I think we should go further and have a full nationalization. Because a full nationalization will help all of us, not just a very small few. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further, so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.